Hi, good morning. A warm welcome to I Am Serves, this is I Am Serves Water Webinar. We welcome you today. We we'll do aspirations for today's webinar. The first one is Kyle, who's very knowledgeable on the, the water side, going to give you some insight into future water changes. A second aspiration is I'm going to give you an overview into Inventisime's uh, solution. A little the housekeeping for today. This webinar we're going to be using audio broadcast. The small box in the right hand corner needs to re remain open throughout. If you'd like to chat to the host, click on the speech button in the top right hand corner and type in the text in the box. Don't be shy with any questions. If you'd like to write any questions to, to us by the end of the webinar, which we will answer, click on the question mark in the top right-hand corner and open the Q&A box. Hope you won't experience any technical difficulties, but if you do join the webinar, just email marketingatimeserve.com or speak to us directly through the chat bar. Relax. Enjoy the webinar. Now I'll pass you over to Kyle. Hello, uh, my name is Carl Duckett. Uh, I'm going to speak through uh, the current water market, uh, water market reform, and then Sam will speak about the, the solutions to actually utilise the changes in the water market. So first, look at the current water market. Um, let's come into this. I'm going to look at water supply and investment, uh, price rises, water service issues, and changing water supply. So, each new water industry, uh, the UK supplies more than 17 billion litres of uh, water to domestic and commercial customers. All collects and treats over 16 billion litres of resulting wastewater. What is new water infrastructure? Well, uh, new sewage systems such as the Cross London and Cross Glasgow schemes, securing water supplies, potential transportations north to south, uh, being connected interconnectors and pumping station upgrades. So what investment is needed per year? Water and sewage uh, companies need to plan investments of four billion a year through to twenty twenty and beyond. This will be passed through to the customer. Their prices must increase to meet this shortfall. For example, Anglian Water in their current business plan estimate four hundred and twelve million alone per year. Okay, the next slide is uh, is just a, basically a picture to show you um, how much is supplied per day um, per water supplier and also the leak percentage of that as well. So if you're looking at uh, the top one, Southern Trent Water, uh, they are just under 2 billion litres per day um, and then it's 27% of that is wasted in leaks. Uh, that's about half a billion this is per day. So it just gives you a little flavour of how much wastage there is due to the aging infrastructure. Okay, so in the, uh, the next slide, uh, price rises. So uh, it's the news recently, uh, the PR14 price review. This, this is the uh, price bracket that's set for the next five years. Um, so for an example of this, uh, Thames Water have actually asked off, off what? For an 8% rise from the last year of PR9, so 2013. Uh, this shows again that uh, water companies are struggling uh, with their operating costs. So where does the UK rank for water cost against the rest of the world? Well, actually, uh, they're second in the world uh, after the, the Danes. It's very, very expensive water. Offrock will release the long-awaited methodology for the price review. Uh, it will be fully released uh, between now and quarter one next year. Potential bill impacts. Uh, this will get companies thinking about the water, the, their own water strategy uh, and their potential action or investment in the water strategies. This will affect the water budgets for next year, so any price rises uh, will affect their budgets. And this will highlight to companies in regards to water reduction, um, and it will be going up, it will going to further up the chain to board level, uh, so you start thinking about the cumin strategies as well. Next, I'm going to look at uh, water service issues. So, some services currently considered uh, to be of low standards, 
So water companies don't have to try and butter up their customers in order to win business. It's more or less guaranteed business. Because it's not generally available electronically. So due to the so-called guaranteed business, water companies have not really invested in online platforms. Uh, data visible. Meter devices are not readily installed, which hinders data gathering analysis. Um, so this puts the water industry behind elect the electricity and gas market. Businesses have multiple sites which have multiple bills and suppliers. This means administration costs uh, to collect these bills monthly, bi-monthly and quarterly. Um, also be reporting on varying different tariffs. This also means uh, a number of different contacts uh, for each company um, because it's sort of 18 or so of water suppliers. So it's, it, there are potential issues there. Looking at some more water service issues, um, companies have the monopoly in their region. This is a, a near, near total uh, domination in their region, only for the very few that slip through with the volume restrictions that they've got. Um, so a few have changed supplier, but it, it is a, a dominated region there. Can't able to uh, negotiate a better deal for the water supply. Uh, so this is literally what the, the water company sets the price as. Uh, obviously, it's got to be within the limits of the, the PR14 or the current PR9. Customers have no choice. Uh, water companies know this, and that in the past they've failed uh, to sort of give a customer experience because they know the cost of customers are locked in. Okay, so now we talk about changing water supplier. So the original rule was that uh, single-site consumers over 50 million litres uh, could discuss a change of supply. Um, this is a vast amount of water, and due to this volume restriction, only one company took advantage of this. This has now changed from 50 million litres to 5 million uh, litres during April 2013. Uh, again, the response for this wasn't great. Uh, in the first seven weeks, uh, only two uh, companies changed supplier. The guys, and this is still not enough. Um, in particular, Richard Bennion, uh, the water minister, uh, in response to the Queen's speech, uh, said it's not if but when the water market opens. So just further emphasising the fact that it, it is going that way. I'll talk through uh, the water market reform. Um, there's relevance to this, so I'm going to go through the open water program, uh, the reform timeline and the impacts for customers and water companies. So for the Open Water Program. So this is a this is a group that was set together to actually support the delivery of the open water market and the reform. Um, so just a few things that they actually strive to do. Um, is driving sustainable approaches to managing our water services, um, mainly the to increase choice for customers and stimulate innovation. So, for instance, when the water market opens, uh, hopefully have it creating that competition uh, to involve new companies into the mix. Now looking at the reform timeline, so to see what's actually happened so far. So looking at the white water paper, uh, December 2011, things have changed since then. So the, the original uh, was to be that it would change from 50 million litres down to five, but that's already happened. Um, obviously realising that it wasn't going to be enough. Um, went through to the draft water uh, bill, which was in July 2012, uh, going on to the, the bill, which is hopefully going to be passing through uh, Parliament, so it's, it's expected to be enacted during the first six months of 2014. Uh, looking at the Royal Senate in 2014 as well. Uh, and then finally, April 2017 is the target for market opening. Okay, why will it take us to 2017? What needs to happen? Looking at this then, uh, the journey through legislation and the associated regulations. So already from the timeline you can see that it takes a lot of time, and, but it should be wrapped up by the end of 2014. The design, the market rules and processes. So this is a complex change and they want to get this right, so it does need a lot of debate within the uh, Open Water Programme. Um, so they just need to make sure they learn the lessons from the Scottish market uh, and make it as seamless as possible. 
So the field and test the associated institution systems and data. So this is actually trialling the data uh, that will be going into, say, the, uh, the trade-off between the distribution and supply companies, because obviously it's, it's going to be following the type of electricity uh, sort of format and the Scottish market. So the impacts for the customer. With the changes, companies will be able to uh, change uh, supply for their whole portfolio. So just a little uh, illustration there to sort of show just, uh, say, a retail company um, with multiple sites. They'll be able to go to one supplier. Uh, this will open up to 1.4 million businesses. Um, so it's a vast, vast market that will be opening up. So this reform will, uh, the water, it will take the water industry into the 21st century to give businesses more choice and flexibility um, because it has been far behind the electricity and gas market. Okay, what should companies start thinking about? So they should start thinking about AMR, AMT, uh, for logging water data. And they can aid in a number of things. So the first one to look at is water reduction strategies, reporting, uh, uh, corporate sustainability reports. So basically, they need to know what the baseline is uh, of their data, uh, sort of where they are, and to, before they know where they can actually go. Uh, you would need AMR or AMT water logging devices for this. Got any sort of um, consumption and awareness programs? You obviously want to know where you are again. So and that baseline is key. You could see markets open up. So water procurement market. Um, Obviously, if you know where your baseline is, uh, if you know what you've consumed in the previous year, um, and also if, if companies can forecast with that the, the, the uh, water reductions that they could make with any uh, sort of investment they've done, uh, if, if, if they can forecast well, then these would be the companies that can actually get the best deal or procure the best deal uh, for themselves with another water supplier or even the same one. So investment water reduction. So if they do, if they have got money to invest uh, in such things as manual controls, low flow taps, rain to harvesting, etc., they know where they are and have clear data to make sure that these these uh, investments return on invest, uh, return. Okay. Impacts for the water companies. So in a market where the uh, the customers can pick the water supplier, it leaves an element of risk for water companies. Um, so obviously, lots of customers could leave, and this could detriment to any water business. Um, so water companies recognise that they need to keep their customers. So how do they achieve this? So uh, I've got two main areas here that I want to focus on. So these reactions uh, from going to numerous water events is that uh, they're going to focus on the level of customer service. Also, the introduction of new billing and data platforms. But I'll go on uh, in, in more slides uh, about that shortly. Just wanted to a, a, a sort of note well um, with the sort of market opening, it, it could be the possibility that water companies may split into two clear divisions uh, to get competitive. So, uh, first distribution company and then the supply company. So that. The, it is looking like they, they, will, they will split into these divisions to make it fair. So if, if new supply companies come in, they will be able to uh, buy from distributions at a fair price. Okay, so looking at uh, customer services then. So what are the uh, companies doing to raise customer service? So they can designated customer retention teams, employee account managers, uh, they're also looking at business tariffs, uh, reductions in order to win business. But obviously, with prices going up, they're going to have to be quite innovative in the way they, they try to market these uh, reductions but increases. So next, I'm going to look at the billing and data platforms. So, so it needs a lot of improvement uh, in the systems that they've got currently. Um, it needs to be more advanced to deal with the multiple site bills and customers were to be anywhere in the country. So they want to do is, is, is do a lot of collation of the customers' bills uh, and consolidation. 
uh, data platforms. So there's there's two sides to this as well. Uh, uh, a data platform that shows the market operations. So uh, there would be to be investment into this between all the companies. Uh, so this will basically show who's consumed whose water uh, between the distribution and supply companies. And then B, uh, a customer web platform that will show data, run reports, etc. Um, this will entice customers to stay at the water company or hopefully bring in new customers. So that's an online data platform uh, for customers. Now we're going to look at uh, water measures and costs. This is to give you uh, just a bit of a flavour on, on the prices, etc. So the average cost then to supply one litre of water in the UK is 0.13 pence per litre. Uh, the average cost to supply and take away a litre of water is at 0.2 pence per litre. Usually the build uh, in metres cubed, uh, so I thought I'd give you prices for that. So to supply is about £2, just over, and to take away is about £3.4. So just looking at the cubic metre again, I thought I'd try and break that down, uh, just to give people a bit of a perspective on that. Um, so the, as you can see, uh, one meters cubed of water is a thousand liters. Um, it's 1,759 pints, 220 gallons, and this actually weighs a ton. A bit more information, so the uh, average person consumes about 160 liters of water a day. That costs about 55 pence, less than the cost of one liter of bottled water. And just a slide uh, to give you some domestic uh, uh, sort of consumption, basically, uh, and the, the sort of potential prices of this. So look, if you look at shower, nine pence, and it's probably around 35 to 40 litres used. Uh, flush in the toilet, I suppose you can relate that to businesses, uh, at two pence uh, between 7.5 and 9.5 litres used. And this is a little uh, quote, I thought, was quite good and using, um, so that's just something to ponder. What I'll do now, um, if you have got any questions, if you could just uh, put them through on the chat, that would be great. Um, but what I'll do, I'll pass you through uh, to Sam now, and she will we'll go through her presentation. Hi, good morning again. So my name's Sam Dean. I'm the Business Development Manager at Inventus High and Serve. The second part of the webinar, we're going to be focusing on, I'm going to give you a bit of preamble first of all about Inventus Design Serve, and then I'm going to talk to you about our water solution, and how water data intelligence can deliver customer value. So, a couple of slides about Inventus Design Serve for those of you who don't know who we are. So, we were founded in 1990 then called UK DCS, we were owned by the big six energy suppliers. Um, then we, prior, um, after privatisation, we were acquired by Invensys, and um, Invensys um, Europe Limited, changed name in 2009, and we did the Invensys Operational Management Division. Just, just a few points about Invensys, of those of you who have not heard of us, we're a FTSE 250 company, um, offices in 50 countries, and our products and services are sold and distributed in 180 countries worldwide. Wayne Edmonds is our chief executive. Our turnover for last year was 2.5 billion. Total employees for Inventus 20,000. Um, I am Serve, um, a part of Inventus Group, is based in Milton Keynes. Our strategy, I am um, strategy, is based around monitoring, visualization, and control. So it's quite simple. Um, staff within the I am serve group, 160 office based staff based in Milton Keynes, and then we've got 60 field based employees. Um, a little bit about our, our services, just got a couple of slides here. Um, predominantly, our focus and, and core heritage has been based on electricity metering. Our market share within the electricity market. Obviously, we had the monopoly when we were owned um, previously. Um, 
based on electricity, we've got a 45% market share in the off hourly fiscal market. Um, we've, we've moved more down value chain offering gas and water, multi-utility, and, and we install those meters, maintain those meters, and we collect the data from those meters to be able to put it into a, an online energy intelligence platform, and so to, to send the data to energy suppliers to enable them to build effectively commercial and industrial customers. We found ourselves in being totally um, independent, we're not connected to any one energy supplier um, or any one meter manufacturer or any single comms. We use GPRS, GSM, um, send some data via the internet. Um, we launched our control offering in June 2009, that's a, a new addition to the, to the strategy. Um, which has done, done very, very well. One of the things that we're looking at at the minute is a microcontrols unit in the um, smaller um, industrial market that's taking off very well. If you have any more information on that, please um, contact us. And we, we offer an end-to-end -end niche solution service um, within IMSERV. So building on our heritage of data collection, we, we offer an energy intelligence, multi-utility, and we have seen a drive in the market for sub-metering services and water, hence why we're here today. Our typical routes to market are, are three routes, uh, higher energy suppliers, um, partnership models, We've got partners with consultants, brokers, very strong partners there, and um, with FM organisations, and direct, our direct customers as well. Some of the, the sectors that, that we serve, very strong in the, the retail sector, um, local government, manufacturing, industrial, um, we started to do some work, banking, property services, a, a massive drive, like as I said, in um, sanitary and water solutions. Control, particularly within the retail sector and the hospitality sector, also moving more down that um, journey. Um, focus with we're looking at the metering, monitoring the metering, being able to see that data, but being able to control it. So moving on to the to the presentation, what are some of the market drivers and challenges and, and trends that we're seeing with regard to remote hardware for water? So what customers are asking for is accurate data. That's one of the prime importance. Are we being billed correctly? Are we able to effectively monitor our consumption? Are we using what we think we're using? Leaks, for example. The ability to be able to act on water leaks, night loads. Um, you wouldn't expect excessive night loads um, for water consumption. That may indicate that there's a leak on the site. To enhance our understanding and control of water usage, very strong in Electricity, which is well developed and in maturity within the market, but, but predominantly um, water is very new, as Kyle mentioned. An aging infrastructure um, where, where leaks are prominent, and you want to be able to see that, that data and that intelligence. Your understanding and control of water usage is, is quite key to be able to deliver that value within the market and for customers. And to think about the next stage of um, the journey is to, to look at reducing consumption and then giving you the ability, facility managers and budget holders, the facility to be able to forecast your budget and be able to accurately say what your water spend is across your portfolio and be able to benchmark that is key um, with any water solution. We're also seeing a drive um, for um, corporate social responsibility, green strategies, and what we're seeing in the market when we speak to customers or um, key verticals is the buzzwords of sustainability and carbon are there, but what they're not sure of is the practicalities of how they actually get there. We're hoping this solution will be able to deliver that, that practicality. Data intelligence, simplicity of the data, being able to navigate um, easily around that information, be able to see your portfolio, getting the dynamic reporting is quite key. That's why we think that our energy intelligence portal, energy data vision, will be able to deliver that. I'm now going to talk about 
I serves water solution. How we think this water solution will deliver an end-to-end -end value um, through seamless energy intelligence, and that energy intelligence is EDV. Just a little bit about EDV. We've been very lucky within IMSERV that we got Inventus approval 18 months ago, and the spend on EDV to revamp it from an electricity-centric energy intelligence portal was £1.6 million. So you can see the importance within I am serving inventors of this energy intelligence portal. A bit about the water solution that you can see there. I've put a slide there. And it's based on and getting the, the information from the customer um, to be able to do either a desktop survey or a site survey if required. Um, and then hardware solution, and, and predominantly what we're finding within the market is that the customers aren't particularly bothered what the hardware solution is. It could be a submeter, it could be a data logger, but what they're interested in is the real energy intelligence and the transparency of that energy consumption, being able to see their water consumption across their portfolio. So, so we deliver the, the survey information via a desktop top um, site survey as mentioned. We then put together the hardware solution that may be a submeter uh, or it may be a data logger if it's post enabled um, water meter depending on um, the, the, the customer's portfolio and the requirements. The data retrieval, we um, exploit our data retrieval capabilities for electricity. And then I think what differentiates us with this particular solution is that we're able to give that bureau analysis. So bureau analysis will enable us to be able to look at the data, be able to look at certain trends and look where energy can be saved. And this can be a, a self-service, so the customer can manage that, that energy intelligence, or it can be a managed service using our bureau expertise. And then pulling that data into energy data vision to give that transparency, so dynamic reporting. And I'm going to show you couple of slides um, next on, on some of the reporting that we're able to produce via new EDV and alerting capabilities, so an email alert, say you've gone over a certain threshold, or dashboard intelligence, which is, um, is very useful and we've seen a lot of demand in the market. And then what supports that process from start to finish is a customer-centric project management team. So we've got individuals who make sure from start to finish, that that portfolio is managed quite effectively. And the reason that's quite key is because you've got all these regional water companies within the marketplace, and they've got different processes, different protocols, different margin mechanisms, as Carl sort of mentioned, about different levels of customer service that they will operate. We interact with each of those water companies, and we're able to make the process very seamless. So it's an end-to-end -end process from being appointed and doing a survey on the portfolio to being able to provide that data intelligence, and if required, being able to do that analysis on the data. So slides now, um, just to give you um, a feel for the energy intelligence portal. I'll put that slide in there just to give you a feel of the, the log on screen, and that can be branded as well, that, that, that screen. Um, and you've got a user ID and, and password, so you've got the um, inventors colours there, but we can we can brand that as, as mentioned. And then we've got um, some reporting. So I've got a, I've got a couple of reports that I've pasted into the presentation just to talk you through some of the energy intelligence that we can pull out. So the first report is a is a day type comparison report, and it's basically a view across the portfolio um, items by day by week. So consumption. Um, enables like-for-like -like analysis, and it gives it an interactive view. The report can also be used for day type or portfolio aggregated totals. And then you've got the multi-analysis graph, and basically this graph um, is available in four or five week views within a day split applied. A split function enables you to consider consumption with time day activities, so for example, opening times, closing times, bit of high peak demand for water or electricity or gas, whichever multi utility you want to use it for. The report also provides total max 
and minimum usage, which I think is quite useful to be able to benchmark. And talking about benchmarking there, I've got a month-to-month -month report I just wanted to um, show you, which gives you a specific site, or you can put a range of sites within that report. Um, the example shown on the screen shows a comparison for a, a site this year and last year. So you can look at performance improvements and changes identified um, quickly via this report. Very useful. This report provides a maximum view of consumption for longer term analysis. And the associated table provides daily values and monthly values. And those tables, you can export that into something like Excel or, or any other um, kind of document um, if required. And the last sort of like look and feel that I wanted to show you is I've just pasted in there a monthly actual and average consumption graph. And it enables you to see how far the highest day's usage are from the average, which provides an opportunity to reduce the experience or assist with engagement locally um, with stakeholders. So just to give you a general feel for some of the reports. Here I've just pasted in basic dashboard, but I said earlier within the presentation we are seeing a growing demand for dashboard intelligence, and this can be via a plasma screen in reception. Um, I've seen this in the Carbon Trust, for example, um, and some of our key customers that have got this in reception, or intranet, um, and this can be branded again, and it can be bespoke to the customer's requirements. So you've got energy tips on there, you can see consumption, but also to assist with engagement, engagement internally with stakeholders and engagement with external stakeholders as well as they come onto the site. They can show that you're quite green savvy and your corporate social responsibilities can be communicated via this dashboard. Um, so that's, that's very um, useful. So just coming to the end of the webinar, I want to just summarise Kyle's points and um, the points that I've gone through. So what are the key drivers with water AMR? So I, I think it's, it's quite good. It's um, the regulatory drivers that are, that are about. The government is keen to support growth and innovation within the water industry, as well as obviously keen to protect the environment. So we're aware that, that the regulatory drivers are dominating energy strategies. And it's evidence as well that governments cannot achieve this vision for water for the water sector alone. So companies like um, Ventus Iron Server are keen to assist them. Efficiency, saving pound notes basically, the affordability aspect is quite key for, for customers and market. The change of the water meter and the process surrounding getting that AMR data is complex. Not as easy as electricity, it's not, not as mature, it's in its early infancy, as Kyle mentioned. There's different water companies with different processes, and we've got different charging mechanisms and different protocols going on there. We acknowledge that customers switching suppliers, in particular for large supplies I've put there, has not worked well in the past. But we should acknowledge, and we really should look at this for moving forward with the England Wales market, is the Scotland competitive market has been relatively successful. The metric that I've put there is that 42% of customers have switched negotiated better terms. And that's one of the biggest drivers that we must keep hold of for the, for the legislative point. Corporate social responsibilities and energy savvy customers, as mentioned with the, with the dashboard intelligence, a, a big drive with regard to dashboard water prices, you can't pick up a broadsheet um, in, in the last couple of days that it's not mentioning the increase in, in water surprise prices, and it's now becoming a boardroom topic, and it's something that companies are considering um, with the increased hikes in prices. Pay another big driver within today's marketplace. Typically, two years ago, when I was speaking to a customer, it may be 24 months payback. And now we're looking at 18 months. But saying that, last week I was with a customer and they were talking about a, a 12-month payback um, required. So that's a key consideration for water solutions. Ability to 
can manage a multi-site portfolio data and give customers access to that data in a very simple, interactive, dynamic way is of importance. And I'm served as being quite key in investing in EDV, seeing that as important, the energy intelligence piece. And that then delivers the, the longevity and the stickiness with the customer and being able to give them that information, being able to analyse that information easily is quite key. Another point I wanted to finish on is that the measuring and monitoring is, is not of prime importance um, with this particular solution. Neither is it with electricity, gas, or, or submetering, but it's the data intelligence that really does deliver the real value. I've enjoyed um, the webinar that Kyle and I have given you today. If you've got any questions, um, please, please do ask. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Sam. We've actually had a high quantity of questions that have actually come through. We'll cover as many as we can live, and then we'll get back to you um, via email. This one is for you, um, Kyle. Um, what is Royal Ascent? Royal Ascent. Okay, uh, so in searching for the uh, uh, we're searching for the webinar, I'll actually have to look at this as well myself. Um, so once the bill is completed uh, with all the parliamentary stages, so in both houses, um, is is ready to receive royal assent. Uh, so this is when the Queen formally agrees to make the bill into an act of Parliament, so a law. That's pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Um, one for you, I'm afraid, Carl. There's yeah. quite a lot on on this area. Um, if the current threshold for changing the supplier is five million litres on a single site, what is the proposed threshold for the market opening in 2017? Or is it the only change that it will also apply to multi-site companies? That changes for all companies. Um, so obviously the, the, the government realising that they wasn't going to get much uptake on the five million per site, they've actually uh, scrapped that now, and they're, they're pushing through to actually open up to all companies to make it a real competitive market. Right, and another one I'm on a similar subject, and um, with the coming of the, an open market, is awareness of among business consumers? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, well, with uh, sort of the water events that have been going on, uh, if customers have actually gone, gone to those, uh, the water companies have uh, made people aware, but there have not been any sort of external uh, communications really to make business consumers aware. Um, obviously, because the water companies have to do a lot or prepare a lot for this market opening, they're not really going to sort of shout about people changing water supply because they want to keep their customers. So I guess the only way you'd have, you'd have heard about uh, these changes would have been at water events or at such webinars like these. Great. I think this one's for you, Sam. Will customer be able to upload the data from another source into EDV? Yes. Um, EDV is, um, is able to uh, upload any data from any um, Standard source, ESP, etc. So that that is um, yes. The question is yes to that. Okay. Um, another one for Kyle. Um, I don't know whether you'll know this one straight off, but um, I will ask you. How much do water companies spend on fixing leaks? Uh, well, back to my presentation, uh, the proposed four billion a year. Um, that's what is expected to be invested to maintain and improve the infrastructure, um, which would be sort of fixing leaks. Uh, I've got an example of uh, one of the business plans, so which uh, is the Southern Trent Water, um, and they're committed to reducing leakage by more than 12 litres per uh, customer per day. So it's not really given us a financial figure, but it's a litres per customer per day. Um, so we, we will see. Okay, got one for Sam. Um, would EDV be able to produce customised email alerts notifying when a water threshold has been reached? And the answer to that question is um, yes, um, EDV is able to do that. You see, you can personalise your own um, thresholds. Um, it's very customer-centric, EDV, so you could you could put in your own threshold and it will send you an alert. You can have a daily alert, a, a monthly alert, and it will send you an email telling you when you've um, reached that alert. Okay, and, um, one for Kyle. Um, what is the average water consumption of a company? Oh, okay. uh, to be honest, we've got figures on uh, the 
average consumption for companies because they obviously uh, there's different numbers of buildings, people, and there's different processes that actually go on within them buildings. But um, for instance, let's take I'm Service Building. Uh, we've got around 200 people in the building, um, and it's used for general office use. Um, and we do about a thousand cubic meters of water per year. So that's yeah, just to put it in perspective. That's great. Thanks. Um, Sam, for you, um, how is the iron served water solution different from other solutions on the market today, as far as you know? Well, that's a tough question, but we, we've done some research, our product management research. I mean, one, one of the things that I would say, going back to that solution slide, is it we offer an end-to-end -end solution, and the project management piece is where we truly differentiate ourselves. And we exploit our, our fields and data expertise from our electricity heritage um, to be able to do that. And as I, as I mentioned within the, the presentation, the hardware solution is not the prime importance, it's more about the data intelligence, so hopefully that, that came across. Um, we also have a, a very agile and innovative project management function that Invent Design serves, so we're constantly talking to hardware suppliers and the market for new innovations, listening to our customers. So we're very active in, in customer focus groups and, and speaking to the market to make sure that the solution delivers what the customer actually requires. So I think that's probably our differentiator. That's brilliant. And another one for you, Sam. What time intervals is the water data presented in? Um, standard would be half hourly. And um, I think one for, for you, Cal, um, when will the market operation be finalised? Okay. Um, well, I believe this will be finalised between 2015-2016 uh, uh, after receiving the Royal Ascent. Um, obviously, the, the war, that will give the war, Open Water Programme uh, the sort of go-ahead to actually push on and start trialling systems and making the big decisions. Um, and obviously, companies uh, from 2016 can actually get prepared for the water market opening. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, Sam, I think a final question for you. Um, do you also provide maintenance services for hardware solutions? Right, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, yes, we do provide that. We've got a field, as I said, a, a field. We, we um, exploit our field expertise so we can provide uh, maintenance services. It would be on, a, on the commercial basis. It would be on a, an annual um, fee or on a transactional type um, arrangement that's what's built into the, the commercial model. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, I think we're probably um, going to answer any additional questions um, offline and we'll get back to you as soon as we can um, via email. I'll just pass back to, to Sam um, to finish off. Yeah, thank you very much for your, your time today. I hope you um, enjoyed the, the webinar. All feedback is very welcome so we can tailor future webinars. So, so please, um, if, you, if you feel that you, you've got some feedback, if you could feed that back to our, our marketing people, that would be very useful. And thank you, thank you very much for your time and effort today. Thank you. And the final steps, if you'd like any further information or have any questions, then please contact Kyle or myself on the, um, on the last slide, if you can see that, um, at iamserve.com. Um, and thank you for um, watching and listening. Thank you very much, guys.